Hello everyone. Today we are going to study about the transportation across the membrane. The transportation is required because the cell keep on exchanging, continuously exchanging its thing with it, its contents with the outer environment. Cell बाहर से अंदर भी कुछ ले सकता है और अंदर से बाहर भी कुछ भेज सकता है. इस exchange को हम लोग क्या बोलते हैं? Transportation, right? So before studying the transportation, we should know some the simple definitions like diffusion. What is diffusion? Diffusion कुछ भी नहीं है. किसी भी molecule का movement from its higher concentration to its lower concentration until the concentration at both the places get equal. That process is called as diffusion. Right? So diffusion kya hai? Diffusion kuch bhi nahi hai. Diffusion is agar yahaan pe concentration zada hai. Yahaan kam hai. To in molecules ka movement yahaan se yahaan. Kab tak? जब दोनों ही तरफ कंसेंट्रेशन बराबर ना हो जाए, that process is called as diffusion. Diffusion require no energy. Diffusion process के लिए हमें energy की requirement नहीं है. हमारी cell, we know that our cell is externally bounded with the plasma membrane. तो कोई भी substance cell के अंदर या cell के बाहर इस प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन को क्रॉस करके ही जा सकता है। The the substance, the molecules which has to enter or exit the cell, that is possible only through the plasma membrane. कुछ मॉलिक्यूल्स हैं जो प्लाज्मा मेम्ब्रेन को क्रॉस कर सकते हैं। With the process of diffusion, let's say if this is our plasma membrane. Plasma by there. कौन से molecules easily diffuse हो जाते हैं? We know the nature of our plasma membrane. The nature of our plasma membrane is hydrophobic. A plasma membrane inside layer is made up of hydrophobic tails of fatty acids of the lipids. So the molecules which can be easily diffused through this plasma membrane should also be hydrophobic. So the molecules which are non-polar, hydrophobic can easily cross the membrane with the process by the process of diffusion. Other substances are the gases like carbon dioxide, oxygen, nitrogen. These gases also can easily transported from uh, inside to outside or from outside to inside by the process of again diffusion. So the movement of these molecule is free across the membrane. The next substance with, with whose movement is possible but to a lesser extent that are small uncharged polar molecules. These could also be transported uh, across the membrane, but the rate of transportation of these molecules is quite less than the rate of transportation of these molecules. As you have, you can see that I have made only a single arrow here and the three arrows for the transportation of these molecules. This shows that the transportation of these molecules is at higher rate, but the transportation of these molecules is at Lower rate, right? The next molecule which can transport it across the plasma membrane are large sized uncharged molecules like our glucose molecule. This also can be transported, like our carbohydrates, this can also be transported, but to a very, very less extent. The things which cannot be transported at all are the charged species. 
membrane is impermeable for the charged species charged species cannot be diffused across the membrane uh, itself right why there is the difference between the movement of polar and non polar molecules this is because in the polar molecule the polar molecules have a hydration shell around them this is the hydration shell which is formed with the help of water molecules around the polar molecules to go through the plasma membrane to get transported across the plasma membrane the hydration shell of the molecule should have to be broken uh, should have to be break, broken right to break this hydration hydration shell uh, the energy required is very high energy requirement for the breakage of this hydro hydration shell is quite high that much amount of energy cannot be provided by the cell for the transportation of these polar molecules that's why their transportation is to a very minimum extent inki transportation ho to sakti hai lekin to a very lesser extent in comparison to the non polar amino acid because of the present uh, presence of this hydration shell so what we do cell ko aisa to nahi hai ki sirf aur sirf requirement hai non polar aur hydrophobic molecules ki cell ko to sab cheezon ki requirement then what cell will do to transport the other molecules in a cell there are having uh, the cell uh, having different type of transportation system for the transportation of these molecules in a cell two type of transportation can be possible one is passive transportation another is active transportation these are the two type of transportation which is possible across the plasma membrane so we will study passive transportation and active transportation one by one so let's first of all discuss what is the passive transportation and what is the active transportation the passive transportation do not require any energy no energy is required for Uh, the transportation of molecule which are getting transported with the help of passive transportation why because in passive transportation the movement of molecule is from their higher concentration to their lower concentration aur hame pata hai koi bhi molecule agar apni higher concentration se apni lower concentration mein aata hai then that molecule do not need any energy for such type of transportation it means that passive transportation is along the concentration gradient from the higher concentration to the lower concentration higher to lower and no energy is required for the passive transportation that means it is energy independent but if we talk about the active transportation active transportation requires the energy because the active transportation is always against the concentration gradient the movement of the molecule will be from their lower con uh, lower concentration to their higher concentration that means active transportation is always against the concentration gradient and it requires energy energy dependent and the movement of the molecule will be from lower to higher 
हमें मॉलिक्यूल्स को वहां ट्रांसपोर्ट करना है जहां पे ऑलरेडी उनकी कंसेंट्रेशन ज्यादा है विच मीन्स दैट द मॉलिक्यूल्स विच हैव द हायर कंसेंट्रेशन ऑलरेडी इनसाइड द सेल और ऑलरेडी इन एनी ऑर्गेनिले एट देयर एट दैट प्लेस अगेन वी आर ट्रांसपोर्टिंग द सेम मॉलिक्यूल सेम मॉलिक्यूल की मूवमेंट करवाई जा रही है जहां पे ऑलरेडी उनकी कंसेंट्रेशन बहुत ज्यादा दैट इज डन विद द हेल्प ऑफ एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन राइट इन एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन वी विल फर्दर कैटेगराइज द एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन इन टू डिफरेंट कैटेगरी वॉट आर द डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ द पैसिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन एंड द एक्टिव ट्रांसपोर्टेशन in the passive transportation we are further having two categories the first is the simple passive transportation and second is facilitated facilitated passive transportation in case of active transportation we are having two classes one is primary active transportation and another is secondary active transportation we will study all these transportation one by one actually the difference between simple and facilitated is in the simple passive transportation we do not need any type of assistance no facility is provided in simple passive transportation but the facilitated passive transportation as the name suggests have some sort of assistance some sort of facility for the transportation of molecules similarly if we talk about the active transportation in the primary active transportation direct energy source is required direct input of the energy is required atp is required directly for the transportation of molecule through the primary active transportation while if we talk about uh, the secondary active transportation in the secondary active transportation as it is the part of active transportation it also requires energy but the energy required is not provided by any external energy source the energy released by the transportation of one molecule will be utilized uh, for the transportation of another molecule energy is required in both primary as well as secondary but in primary active transportation direct energy utilization direct energy source is required but in the secondary active transportation we do not need any type of direct energy source energy for the transfer for uh, energy released from the transportation of one molecule is being used by the another molecule for its transportation so this is the basic idea about the transportation we will study all the transportation one by one first of all we will start with the passive transportation after finishing the passive transportation we will move on to the active transportation right thank you